here at the station, uh, in years past, we've actually done some uh, research on purging crawfish, uh, holding crawfish to let them clean out their gut. Uh, it cleans up. The, they don't have that black vein in there. And it actually takes uh, how long? Uh, purging, 20, 22 hours. All right. So, so to get a, a true purge crawfish, it takes at least 24 hours. Okay. You can't put salt into some wash water and in 10 minutes uh, have them purged. That, that really doesn't work. Uh, so, okay, let's uh, get the basket out and these crawfish. Uh, if you're going to get crawfish, you know, early one Saturday morning and you're not going to cook them till later in the afternoon, uh, take them home, put them in a shade um, and put a sack or even some uh, towels or something on it. Uh, keep them cool. Don't let the wind and sun get on them. But uh, these are already been cleaned, so he's going to put them right into the basket. If you get a sack, if you buy a sack from a farmer or from one of the uh, dealers, uh, you do have to wash them. So dump those. <coughs> Season's getting to me. Um, dump those crawfish in a, um, a tote, and that will uh, uh, kind of wash off some of the stuff. You pull out the bits and pieces of uh, grass that might be in there. Uh, but do not put salt. Uh, let's see. A lot of people... Um, Dump some salt in that wash water. It really doesn't do anything except stress out the crawfish. Um, it does not purge the inside. Okay, so um, putting salt in that wash water, all you're going to do is wind up killing the grass when you dump out the uh, ice chest with all that salt water. So don't, don't use salt. Oops, excuse me, John. Yes, um, okay, as far as seasoning. Okay, you, you start time? Good. All right, so I put a little bit of the liquid crab oil uh, in with the crawfish. I like to use just a little bit of this. That this will add some seasoning to it. Um, we're gonna actually uh, season with some some of the dry uh, seasoning. Once they're cooked, we'll uh, dump them into ice chest, sprinkle them with with the uh, seasoning, and kind of let that sit for a few minutes. And uh, a lot of places, uh, if you get drive-through crawfish, uh, they they do that. So um, we already added that. <clears throat> Every now and then we start choking up. <clears throat> That's because the wind is blowing right at us and uh, blowing the, uh, the season to us. Okay, so um, let me turn it over to John. Uh, John, explain the, the whole purging. And, uh, uh, well, let's back up. You, you caught your crawfish, uh, and then what did you do from there? I caught, I caught the crawfish Tuesday, uh, put them in a the vat, I guess, about 8 o'clock. And then uh, put them in a purge vat. Our purge vat are just big holding uh Half moon, uh, they're about a foot wide, uh, three foot circle, a half circle, uh, with some fine uh, mesh uh, in there, with two air stones underneath it. Uh, we have an overflow. We try to set the water to where it's one complete flushing of well water through the system to flush out in a 24 hour period. Uh, but the, the baskets have little holes in it to where all the crawfish, when they start rubbing on one another or doing their business, it actually falls to the very bottom to where the crawfish can't get back in and eat it. Because if they could get back and eat it, then you you end up with a crawfish with another dark vein instead of a clean vein. Uh, and then I, I sacked them out uh, about 22 hours later, put them in a cooler, wet burlap, put them in there, and uh, pulled them out this morning and covered them and uh, ready to cook. So um, let's see. So crawfish are in there. They're cooking. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, preparing for a crawfish boil. Um, I'm, I guess I'm assuming everybody that is watching this already knows how to boil crawfish, but we might have a few people elsewhere. Um, hopefully a friend of mine, uh, Fred, over in Australia is watching this too. So um, uh, to do a crawfish boil, uh, Hot, you burn them. Make sure you have plenty of gas uh, in your tank. You don't want to run out of gas right in the middle of uh, boiling. Get all your seasonings that you're going to need, all the uh, um, all your trays and stuff. So we have all that on these tables here. And uh, let's see, what else we got? Uh, so we talked about washing the crawfish, getting the water uh, boiled, timing. Okay. Uh, uh, Evelyn, let's talk a little bit about time of crawfish. Hot. Why do we have to cook them for so long? Or tell us what, what's happening in that boiling pot. So uh, 
when you're cooking the, the crawfish, the main issue is safety, that you kill all the pathogens that can make you sick, uh, but also quality. So the importance of cooking it for a long time is to inactivate those enzymes in the fat that are going to digest the, um, the meat if you're going to store it over time, but also is the pathogen. So one thing is the time that you're going to cook it. Some people cook it for four minutes, five minutes. Other people cook it for seven minutes. Uh, but the main thing is that we measure the internal temperature. So once we are getting closer, I'm going to show you how to measure the temperature. You can use different types of thermometers. You can get really fancy with Bluetooth, Wi-Fi thermometers, or just use a regular, just make sure that it's accurate. So we're going to uh, measure that temperature. Um, there are different recommendations on temperatures that you can achieve if you're talking about a product that is going to be immediately consume you want to make sure that it reaches 145 if you like processors that they are processing a product that is going to be stored over time then you have to cook it at 185 instant um kill of the pathogens okay what happens if you what happens if you cook it too long well then you your meat is going to get really tough uh it's going to be harder to peel so the quality is not going to be good Let's see. Uh, I did a little search on the internet, and uh, I found boiling crawfish for two minutes, which is probably just barely getting up to temperature. I've seen a couple of references of 15 minutes boiling, and then you let them sit for another 30 minutes. Yeah, you know, so that's that's going to be like rubber to. So that's that's not good. So, uh, but uh, usually somewhere about uh, four, five, six minutes uh, is enough to get the internal temperature of that crawfish up to uh, uh, 180. 180 or 185? 185. Well, 185. And uh, that's going to take care of uh, the, the enzyme and also the pathogens, the any bacteria that might be in there uh, that could hurt you. Okay. So that's that's our process. Uh, let's see. Where are we now? Okay. So we're timing. You, you got the timer going? Okay. Um, and you want time when it starts to come back to a boil, right? Okay. So is it coming back to a boil yet? Okay. Um, all right, while we're waiting on that, let's talk a little bit about uh, harvesting crawfish. Uh, we're going to put something up uh, about showing John uh, emptying some traps. Okay, so um, Louisiana has about 250,000 acres, so a quarter million acres of crawfish production around the state. Most of it is down here in southwest Louisiana. Um, the biggest uh, parishes producing crawfish is uh, Acadia. Um, Jeff Davis, uh, Vermilion, Evangeline, you know, this, this whole Southwest, uh, rice producing area. Crawfish are grown in aquatic habitat. So a shallow water pond, uh, is, is, is a rice field. Okay. So you have, uh, 10, 12, 15 inches of water and you can grow rice, uh, grow crawfish in those rice fields, or you can have just ponds dedicated strictly for crawfish. Um, and uh, here at the station, we're doing some experiments, uh, growing some rice. Um, and we actually have two ponds that John runs all the time. And one field, uh, we harvested a crop of rice. And then the regrowth from that rice um, the rest of the fall, that provides the food supply for crawfish on into the winter and spring. The second pond that we're running, uh, we actually harvest a second crop of rice. Okay, so... Many rice farmers try to maximize their rice yields by uh, planting rice in uh, March. That first crop is ready to harvest in July. Uh, they can reflood that field, add some fertilizer, uh, and harvest another second crop of rice sometime in October, early November. So um, our second pond it that it has that second crop. Um, so John, tell me a little bit about. Um, the traps that you have set up and how you run those and how, how often you do that. I have a, it's two, uh, seven acre fields. They split in half. Uh, I have four lanes down there in each side, 25 traps in lane. So how many you on the flip flop each side, 200 total. Yep. Uh, uh, usually on Fridays I drop a, since we, we work Monday through Friday, uh, so Fridays, I drop a piece of artificial bait in, in the trap to leave it over the weekend. That Monday, I'll run it 
And with the, these cool temperatures, I end up going to use Pogi. I put Pogi out there, uh, and I run a couple days like that, uh, usually 24-hour sets. And depending on the uh, the catch, whether or not I'll run it or I go to a 48-hour set, it all depends on the catch, whether it's worth doing. Uh, and I, I continue doing that uh, past the, the cold temperature. When it's, we'll move on to running, you know, four or five days a week if it's uh, able and it's feasible. So, Okay, so John brought me one of his traps here. Um, some of y'all that uh, are not familiar with it, uh, these are pyramid traps. Uh, we run about 15 to 20 traps per acre, uh, and these are spread out more or less evenly around the pond. Uh, and let's see, John, hold that for me. And they're baited either with, uh, oop, here, hold, hold that. Okay, uh, this is a, um, a pogey fish. It's a saltwater type of shad, and uh, crawfish farmers will actually chop this in about three pieces and put a little piece of fish in there. Uh, the fish works good in cold water. So, you know, for the last couple of months, we've had real cold water in the ponds. Once it warms up in the spring, this artificial bait that he's got, okay, that, that works good in uh, water temperatures about 70, 75 degrees or higher. Um, it's, it's as good or better uh, than the fish. But in cold water during the wintertime, that little piece of actual uh, fish, the pogey, uh, we'll catch more crawfish. It just has a stronger attractant to it. The crawfish can smell it. So, so that's how we uh, catch the crawfish. This piece of pogey, I cut my own fish. Uh, I cut this piece probably about in three pieces. Uh, right now, my catch out there in the fields, I still have plenty of bait left over. I know a lot of people turn around, they like to get their fish already cut. That's a lot of waste. Uh, if your guys in the field could turn around and tell you, hey, look, they're eating it all, then you can get cut it a little bigger. But that's a lot of money to be spending to turn around and just throw it back in the field and then not be eaten. So uh, at least right now, it's about three pieces I cut out of this piece here. And if they start eating more than that, then I'll cut it to a bigger piece. It, I just hate for people to lose money that way. So anyway. Yeah, and that's one thing I've, I notice uh, in travel around and, and look at different ponds. Um, Bait is a very expensive part of this operation. Uh, the, the fish, the pogey fish, runs somewhere around 57 to 60 cents a pound. Uh, the artificial bait runs about, uh, let's see, what was it, uh, 18, 30, around 40 cents a pound. Okay, so uh, it's, it's a big difference uh, in bait cost. Also, um, the amount of bait you use, you know, you don't want to use a whole pound uh, in a trap. Um, about a third of a pound is uh, what works good. Okay, we're getting ready to do a little something here. Okay, and we have a question about what? Oh, okay, uh, yeah, the artificial bait um, is roughly about uh, 38 to 40 cents a pound. And again, it only takes about a third of a pound to uh, uh, sit in the trap and actually attract those crawfish. So, all right, so in back of me here, Evelyn is actually uh, going to test the temperature. She's going to stick a thermometer in there and let it read out. And what are you getting? 180. Yeah, actually, we are we are at temperature. It's over 180. All right, John, turn off the uh, turn off the gas. And I'll tell you what, Evelyn, let's uh, push the table out the way. We're going to show John dumping uh, all these crawfish into the. We have a um, ice chest that uh, has been cleaned and sanitized, and we'll, we'll talk about clean and sanitizing in just a minute. But uh, uh, it's clean, sanitized, and as he uh, dumps the cooked crawfish in here, I'm gonna use some uh, uh, some dry seasoning, sprinkle on the crawfish. Uh, now, one thing I usually have to do is take off my glasses because they fog up as uh, as we're doing this. Ready, John? Okay, those look very good. Okay, so the season's going in. We're going to cover that. And along with the crawfish, we put a little bit of uh, 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 cut sausage, some uh, smoked sausage. And John, uh, John's going to also squeeze a little bit of lemon juice on top of them. 
and we're going to let that sit for just a little bit. And again, the idea is to not overcook your crawfish. You don't want them to be real tough. Um, shake it up. They'll uh, let that seasoning get into them. And, you know, the dry seasoning, you know, whatever brand you use, uh, it does have some salt in it. So, um, again, that's why you don't have to add a lot of salt to the water. We, we had a question about uh, purging. Okay, uh, there's, okay, explain. Okay, you talked about yours. Uh, explain some uh, other purging systems. Okay. Uh, the picture that they got on the screen, turn around, it, it just, the big holding, uh, I could put about 40 pounds of crawfish to uh, one of them containers. I have 12 of them. There's six. It's two divided into two bays. Uh, they got two air stones underneath it. There's constantly air blowing underneath it. Uh, the water going in, turn around, is, is set to where it's about one, one complete flushing in 24 hours. In other words, if I started 24 hours later, it would just start draining out. You don't need a whole lot of water, water trickling through there. You, you just need it to, if the ammonia levels, crawfish start dying, that, that it, it kind of dilutes it to where it doesn't kill your crawfish. Uh, the, the basket turned around, have a bunch of little holes in it, but it's completely sealed. And uh, you put your crawfish in there, and uh, like I said, they crawl on one another. Uh, they do their business, uh, mud, dirt, grime, anything on them. It ends up going and falling to the bottom through them little holes. If it would, if it'd be a solid container underneath it, they would end up holding all the the, the feces and, and dirt and grime, and them crawfish would start eating that. And that's not making you a purge crawfish. You get a purge crawfish by cleaning that vein and them not being able to get anything to eat there is some you will have some mortality in there uh periodically throughout the season so not that every vein is going to be 100 percent clean whenever you get purged crawfish but it's a lot more pleasant to look at and, and cleaner for you to be able to uh consumer uh we had it made at a, a local company here uh, specialized in it. Uh, you, you go to any welding shop, uh, it, you know, they probably can fabricate one for you. They got different ones, different sizes. Uh, it, it's really hard to, to sit there and, and specify somebody making them. I mean, no, normally it's a welding company that, that does it, that usually does the, the crawfish bowling rigs and things like that. that they, would, they would know if you'd go uh, and ask them what they have. And if not, uh, you need more specs or whatever, uh, you, you could probably find them elsewhere or we can get some information to you if you would get in touch in an email or something. Uh, the dry seasoning, we, we do the dry seasoning for my family and all that. Uh, it, it goes along. A lot of people like to put all their seasoning in there at once. And whenever you put all your seasoning in there at once, uh, with my family, they can't take much seasoning. So we do it this way, sprinkle on the outside. It, it, each person has their their preference of how they want their their the season their their product. Just for us, that's that's what we do. You just put it on there, uh, not a lot to where you don't want them over seasoned and and choking in, in hotness. We we like to enjoy them, not sit there burn burn your palate. So we we turned around before we we did. Uh, it was some crawfish boil yeah, liquid that we that we put in there. And like I said, this was a full bottle, and we put majority of it in the big pot, and actually it's three-quarters to, uh, to a little over half full. So it's just a matter of, you know, you're taking just with this here. You watched the video from the beginning. Every once in a while we would get a little uh, wind blow it to us, and we were we – were, it's letting us know it was in there. So Let's see. There's also some other uh, commercial purging operations around the, uh, around the state that I've seen. And they'll actually use uh, some shallow trays um, that uh, may be three foot wide or four foot wide and eight feet long and have water spraying over the crawfish. Um, and uh, again, it, it's going to take about uh, 24 hours or more to let those crawfish completely clean out their, their gut uh, and get uh, perfectly clean. But uh, so that, there are a few uh, operations around that uh, do purge. Uh, a few uh, restaurants have their own purging systems. Uh, so if you look, you probably can find uh, some restaurants that hit, that serve uh, purge crawfish uh, or even buy some. Yeah, the purge study that was done, uh, Dr. Ray McLean a few years ago, he's retired now. Uh, Ray and John did that uh, project. 
Um, and they put the crawfish in this purging tank, you know, with the uh, aerated water. One, you can see the very definite uh, black line uh, coming down. Uh, and then the other one is purged. Uh, it's cleaned out. So uh, uh, the other thing is when you cook them, um, every crawfish doesn't have to be purged. Okay. I, I don't buy purged crawfish for myself. Uh, I cook them to where they're just cooked. Uh, they reach that uh, 185 temperature. Uh, and then I take them out and uh, put them in a, a, a tote like that with some season sprinkle. But uh, when they're cooked just right, uh, as you uh, pull off the head and then you uh, pinch the tail to uh, get the rest of the shell off, a lot of times that vein will come out uh, with the tail uh, and it's already gone from the, the, from the meat. All right. The ice chest, uh, make sure that, you know, don't do like we uh, – Ball crawfish and put them in your brand new ice chest. Make sure it's a old ice chest that you don't mind turning around. And uh, because when you put the hot crawfish in there, the ice chest is going to swell and the heat and all that. It'll mess up your real good ice chest and it could be real expensive and you're going to be mad. So forth. Uh, but if you're going to haul crawfish to a friend or a friend, family members out of state or a couple days, you could take a regular ice chest like this one. You prop it up like we got here. You got to make sure you pull out the plug at the bottom here. You put the sack of crawfish in there, and you cover it with ice, and you close it. And you, you it'll hold for two or three days that way. Uh, you just need to make sure that uh, you got it leaning, because if you leave the water in there, what ends up happening, it'll drown the crawfish, and you're going to have dead crawfish. So. But uh, with that said, it, it, they'll hold for two or three days. You just put ice, and then you check them later that afternoon. I had more ice until you're ready to cook. So, Yeah, and also if you kind of prop the lid open, you know, just uh, have a crack in there. Just, okay, crawfish are, are an animal that need oxygen, uh, whether they're in a, a crawfish pond or you have them in a sack in an ice chest or something. Um, they, they need oxygen all the time. So if they're... In, in an ice chest and water builds up, all the ice melts and water builds up and has, you know, three or four inches of water at the bottom. Uh, the crawfish will use up all the oxygen in that little bit of water and you'll have a whole solid layer of crawfish dead in, in the crawfish in, in the uh, ice chest. So that's one thing you want to be careful of. Um, they, they will die if they're in uh, a little bit of water and don't have uh, enough oxygen. So drain, drain your ice chest uh, as, you, as you go. All right, uh, let's talk a little bit about... Uh, Crawfish processing. We're, we're going to eat these in a few minutes, but uh, uh, Evelyn, tell us about uh, a crawfish processing plant, and if we want to get some peel tail meat, uh, should we use fresh or frozen? Uh, tell us all about that. Okay, Mark. So um, processing of cra processing of crawfish has evolved through time. Back in the '90s, most of the crawfish was boiled and hot peeled. Nowadays, this uh, has evolved where most of our crawfish is processed or cooked in a line steamer, which allows a better control of the temperature during the cooking uh, process. Actually, processors uh, have a belt speed that they can control. Crawfish is usually cooked for five minutes. And then it goes into a chill tank where the crawfish in between 10 or 15 minutes drops a temperature below 60 degrees, which is really good for safety and to expand the shelf life of the crawfish. Once the crawfish is cold to uh, the peeling room where it's dumped on tables where it's hand peel, um, the crawfish tell me, depending on the time of the season, can yield from... 12, 13% to close to 20%, depending on the maturity of the crawfish. Uh, once the crawfish is peeled, usually every hour, they collect this crawfish tail meat from the tables, is moved to a packing room where someone is gonna uh, go through the tail meat, make sure that there is no pieces of shell or legs to uh, ensure the highest quality possible. After that, the tail meat is bagged and then vacuum pack. And after that, they is dumped in a slush of water that it drops the temperature below 32 degrees to facilitate the freezing process of the crawfish tail meat. Um, 
we a lot of us like to buy that crawfish tail meat fresh at the store well crawfish tail meat is refrigerated the shelf life is not really too long depending how it was processed it can be good just for four days or six days so actually the best thing to do is to purchase the crawfish frozen and most of the plants are actually transitioning to a frozen uh, tail meat uh, on the contrary that we believe that is best fresh crawfish it really if the crawfish gets fresh to the store and after three or four days is not sold and then put it in the fr in the freezer you actually are getting a lower quality of, of crawfish when you uh, at the plant is immediately with a couple of hours since it's live to peel vacuum pack and, and frozen you are getting a fresh frozen product that you can store six nine months and you have the highest quality and safe product in the process and plants um tell us about all the regulations uh health department and to make sure that they, uh, they have a, a clean product you know from start to finish what does a process and plant have to do and you know the workers peeling crawfish t tell us about all that so when uh someone wants to cook crawfish for sale either processors or for retail that you go to a a, a restaurant they have approval from the Department of Health. And that means that they are gonna be inspected and they have to comply with good manufacturing practices. You will see that they are required to wear gloves. They use all kinds of protective equipment to ensure the safety of the product. So that's the first thing. Get, they have to be approved by the Department of Health. Then if they are going out of state and they're hitting other markets, because now we're going national and international, we are exporting crawfish to other parts of the world. Actually, we have to comply with additional regulations from FDA that is HACCP, that is Hazard Analysis and Critical Control Points. This is a preventive system that focuses in different steps of the process to ensure that all the hazards associated with the product, food safety hazards, are control or reduce to an acceptable level. So we ensure that we have a product that is free of pathogens, that doesn't have any chemical residues and it has been properly handled, cooked, etc. Uh, without all these, processors cannot sell to the public. Now tell us the difference between male and female. All right, let's see here. Let's... Yeah, one more. Come with me. Right. Come on. Here we go. Okay. Yeah, this is a female. You see this little round circle right here is a female. This here is the male. There's the four little legs in the middle in the same place. The maturity of a female can be tailed by looking at the little circle right there. If it's discolored and rough looking, it's a mature female. For males, this one doesn't have it on the walking legs. It'll have spurs, which you would see. This one doesn't have it. It's immature. A lot of the crawfish I'm, I'm catching right now are immature crawfish. So male has little legs in the middle. Female has a little round circle. Okay. And let's see, I had a question just uh, uh, yesterday. Uh, a farmer asked me, well, what about uh, the red swamp crawfish? These are all red swamp crawfish. Uh, can it mate with a white river crawfish? Okay, some ponds have a big population of white crawfish. Uh, can you have a, a hybrid? Can you cross them? No, you can't. Why not? Because it's not made to be that way. Okay. So, so those little structures uh, uh, on the male that deposits the sperm into the female in that round little button, is a seminal receptacle, okay, uh, it's like a lock and key. And the lock and key is different for each species of crawfish. So here in Louisiana, there's about 35 species of crawfish. Uh, all of them, um, that little round structure on the females and the modified walking legs um, uh, on the tail of the males, those are different shapes and different sizes. And uh, one species does not fit into the other species. So uh, as much as people want to say, oh, yeah, I crossed them and I got bigger crawfish or uh, this, that, or, or my uh, red swamp crawfish, a real light color, 
the the color of the red swamp crawfish really depends on the stage of maturity. So um, a crawfish is going to molt uh, from the time it hatches, a little teeny tiny thing. Uh, it's going to molt, what, 12, 15 times? Within, uh, we, we've done some studies in our wet lab, uh, and we, with the right circumstances, availability of food, oxygen, water quality being good, uh, a little baby crawfish right off the mother can turn around within nine to ten weeks could be mature. So it, it don't take long for a crawfish uh, with the right temperature and availability of food to become mature. It, right now, the, they're buying crawfish from us at $3 a pound. That's what the, it is. That's buying from us to go sell it to market, uh, directly to farmers selling and all that. And the price fluctuates. I don't know what it's going to, if it's going to go up, go down. More people out there, I'm expecting it, it, it probably end up going down a little. But with that said, turn around, you go buy from them. They got to make their their profit. So it could be 25, 50 cents higher a pound to buy it from the marketplace. So it, I, I don't know where would be the cheapest place to go. But anyway. Yeah, the price of crawfish really kind of depends uh, on a couple of things. Uh, uh, the supply. Um, last week when we had the freezers, uh, we had ice on all the crawfish ponds. Crawfish did not move. So uh, even though uh, some guys went out there and braved the, the cold weather and ran some traps, they only caught maybe one or two crawfish per trap. Um, a lot of traps had nothing. So um, there was a short supply last week. Now with this milder weather, uh, thank goodness, it's uh, getting spring-like. Uh, water temperature in the ponds uh, last week was 35 degrees. Uh, this morning I was in a pond, well, your, your pond at the research center. Uh, the pond water temperature was 61 degrees. So it's warming up. Those crawfish get more active as, as we increase in temperature. So we got, uh, you, you caught about a quarter pound per trap uh, right now at 61 degrees. If another 10 degrees, you'll probably be catching uh, more. Another 10 degrees beyond that, he's going to be catching a pound. So once the water temperature gets up to around 80 degrees, uh, most of the ponds will be catching a pound, if not one or two or three pounds in some cases. So, uh, yeah, the, the catch really uh, fluctuates with the temperature. So wintertime, uh, when we have these cold spells, uh, it, uh, it really slows down the catch. The peak of crawfish production uh, comes in a warmer time of March and April uh, and on into May. John and uh, uh, I are getting kind of hungry. Uh, are you hungry too? Uh, Evelyn. Okay. So, uh, we're going to cut this, uh, short and, uh, uh, get on to eating lunch. Uh, okay. Springtime weather is finally back here. Get your sack of crawfish, bring it home, uh, this weekend, for the next several weekends, uh, get some crawfish, boil them at the house. Uh, we showed you how to do it. Um, don't boil them too long, but, uh, again, boil them long enough to, uh, you know, cook them, uh, throw in as much season as you, as you want. Some people like it really hot. Some people like it mild. So, you know, do that. But uh, enjoy some Louisiana crawfish. Um, if you can't get uh, your hands on some boiled crawfish, go to the store, uh, get some frozen tail meat. Be certain you get Louisiana crawfish. Uh, there are some packs out there that have, uh, it looks like a, a Cajun name. Uh, but if you look at the bottom, it says uh, uh, product of China. Okay, don't get that. Okay, be sure you ask for Louisiana crawfish. Okay, so the PO tail meat, um, we, we got uh, how many processors? Uh, uh, oh, over 70 processors. We got several of here, here in, uh, in Crowley area, uh, in Eunice, uh, Ville Platte, uh, Abbeville, uh, Lafayette, so uh, Henderson. So um, support these local businesses, these Louisiana businesses, and support our local fishermen, our Louisiana fishermen, whether it's uh, farmers that produce them uh, in these fields or a basin fishermen that uh, go to the Chaffalaya Basin and get to get those crawfish. Um, yeah, let's support Louisiana producers. So uh, I think that's about it for today. Uh, thanks for more information. Ah, thank you. For more information, uh, Anna's going to put up uh, a few uh, links on our uh, website, and uh, you can get our uh, uh, crawfish production manual. So for you farmers that uh, want to brush up on some of the management tips, uh, that book has all kind of information about uh, depth of water, water quality, uh, baits, traps, uh, planting rice for crawfish, all that. Um, 
Let's see, Evelyn has some uh, seafood technology uh, pamphlets on uh, food safety uh, with seafood. Uh, check out crawfish, crawfish packaging. Um, let's see, we didn't get to it. Uh, I was going to uh, peel a bunch of crawfish and put them up uh, in a Ziploc bag to bring them home. Um, but um, go get you some from the store. And I think that's about all we have for today. Uh, I'll let you get back to your regular work. We're going to get back to work here. So, yeah. all right. Thanks for tuning in.